It's been a while since I gave an update on my reference setups. Many changes took place, including some reshuffling and price corrections. Economics and wars still are making things more expensive, so prices had to be corrected. But in all three setups there have been changes. The main structure of the three setups still remain, but where I started with one source per setup there now can be several. And some sources are used in two setups. I'll explain further on. By reference setups. I have explained this in earlier videos on my reference setups. If you heard this before, you can easily skip to the next chapter in the timeline. If not, let me explain. A reviewer needs a fixed setup of equipment to anchor his findings. At least I do. It is therefore important to limit changes in these setups to the bare minimum, for it can make comparisons to earlier reviews difficult. At the same time you need references that are relevant and especially digital audio technology still is improving rapidly. To be clear, the gear I use certainly is amongst the best in its price category, but it is picked also to be practical for me to work with. To make comparisons easier. Since I work from home, space is a premium. Money too by the way. I can't afford to have a series of setups stepping up in, say, ten steps from low end to high end. So I have to go about this cleverly. This is done by using equipment in more than one setup, like the subwoofer in setup 3, that is more expensive than would be reasonable. But it does give a good impression of what adding a cheaper sub would do to this setup. The same goes for the network player I now use in both setup 2A and set 1B. Still, I am very careful when replacing equipment, not to lose my reference. Time to go to the setup description, starting at the low end. In setup 3 the amplification is done by the still great NAD C316 BEE. This class AB amp is at the most powerful but combined with the right loudspeakers it surely sounds great. There now is an MK2 edition out, I still use what now could be called the MK1. The loudspeakers are the Dali Oberon ones that are very friendly loudspeakers, placed on 80 target loudspeaker stands with stack audio over 50 isolators. The RAL C5 subwoofer can add deep lows to them if the budget is available. It is connected to the loudspeaker terminals of the NID using the rail supplied cable. The Argon Audio Solo streamer is now replaced by the WIM Pro Plus streamer with iFi Power 2 power supply. Including the power supply it costs 105 euros more but is more versatile, supports more streaming services and sounds somewhat better. I use it mainly as room endpoint but it can be used with its own app instead. In the description you find links to reviews of the products I mention here. Connection to the network is made over Wi-Fi to a nearby TP-Link Deco M4 access point that is part of the mesh network. Alternatively I could use a CAT6 patch cable to the neck clear switch in the machine room on the third floor, of which later on more. Setup 3 is located in the studio on the third floor and the equipment is housed in a target rack from the 80s. The setup total price is 2024 euros without the subwoofer or 2923 euros including the sub. The rail is in a higher class but that makes it possible to use it with my setup too as well. A more matching Dali sub C8 costs 400 euros less and that would add up to 2523 euros. All prices are including 21% VAT, European sales tax. In for instance the US prices are excluding sales tax, which would mean 2085 euros, approximately 2285 US dollars. Keep that in mind when comparing prices. Don't be mistaken, this is a very musical setup that has impressed many people it was demonstrated to. 
setup 2 is split up into a 2B and 2C. They use the same amplifier, loudspeakers, subwoofer, network switch and cabling. Only the digital front end differs. The Marantz PMKI Pearl Lite that has served me for 15 years is now replaced by the Arcam Radia A25. I reviewed it last February and was rather impressed by this powerful yet refined sounding Class G amp. It drives the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers connected over Kimber 4PI loudspeaker cable. They are supported by the RHEL T5 subwoofer that is connected to the loudspeaker terminals on the Arcam using the cable that came with the sub. The three versions of setup 2 are placed in the studio at the third floor and the loudspeakers switch places with those in setup 3 using the same 80's target loudspeaker stands on stack audio Alpha 50 isolators. The network switch is the Upton Audio Ether region with Upton Audio Ultra Caps 1.2 power supply. The equipment is also housed in the 80's target rack. This setup was named 2B up till now, but I wanted a wider range of references in this class so it became 2C. The digital front end here is the Bluesan Note 2i powered by the PD Creative power supply. The Note already had two later iterations but the sound differences are rather small so I kept the 2i. Without the subwoofer but including the switch, rack, stands and isolators it will set you back slightly over 5000 euros. Including the sub, it's 5,900 euros, including VAT. This is a very good sounding setup, and the use of monitor loudspeakers combined with a sub makes it easier to place. If you use my loudspeaker placement system, first place the subwoofer using the subwoofer placement video, and then place the main speakers following the advice for mid range placement. In this setup the Eversolo DMP A6 Master Edition with Beatnik LPS A6 linear power supply is a source. It is connected to the amp over Siltec London RCA cables and to the switch over CAT6 patch cable. Compared to setup 2C there is more resolution, the stereo image is a step deeper and wider, focusing is better and microdynamics are clearly better. Like 2C the stereo pair plus subwoofer makes placement easier especially if you use the high level input on the sub to connect to the loudspeaker terminals of the amp. Excluding the sub but including the switch, stands, cabling and isolators it adds up to 7251 euros including the sub it is 8150 euros including VAT. Here the digital source is the Magna Mano Ultra MK3 Farad streamer running Rupee XL while the conversion is done by the Holo Audio Cyan 2 DAC I bought last month. This combo forms a very good source that borders on the quality of the setup 2 base. It has very good time resolution, stereo image, sibilance control and spectral balance. Lows show fine texture and overall the sound is very relaxed. Without the subwoofer which you don't want. The price is 8820 euros. With the sub it's almost 10000 euros including VAT. Setup 1A and 1B also share the amp and loudspeakers. They are placed in the living room on the ground floor. The Air AX520 amplifier drives the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on stack audio over 70 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The network connection comes from a Zixel GS1900-10HP switch. The equipment is placed in a Creative Trend 3-3 rack. In 1B the same digital front end is used as in 2A. The Holo Audio Cyan 2 DAC connected to the amp over Grim Audio SQM cable and a Magnum Mano Ultra MK3 Farad streamer running Rupee XL. It is connected to the Holo Audio using I2S over a 25 cm 10 inch 4K HDMI cable and to the Zixel switch over the network acoustics Eno system. 
This setup is as a setup out of balance since the amp and the speakers are clearly of higher quality. But it is impossible to have a reference setup in about any class and this setup has proven to let me judge any digital source between the Holo Audio Magna combination and the Grim Audio Mu2 I use in setup 1A. Setup 1B adds up to 53,332 euros but this front end would combine great with a 5000 euro amp and a set of speakers of around the same price. That would add up to a set of price of a bit over 20,000 euros. In 1A the digital source is the astonishing Grim Audio Mio 2 Rune server and player. It replaces the already extremely fine sounding Grim Audio Mio 1 chord tape combination. As I explained in my video why I am selling the Grim Audio Mio 1, the Mio 1 is an exceptionally good digital out only player, scaler and rune server that makes any DAC sound better than with any other digital source for as far as I have seen up till now. But therefore it doesn't bring you as viewer a realistic judgement of a DAC. See the link for more info. The Grim Audio Mu2 like the Mu1 has the rune server and a scaler but instead of digital outputs it has an FPGA DAC integrated and thus analog outputs. It also has a very high quality analog preamp integrated. And it is now part of my setup one. Obviously I can't use it to review other DACs. If my funds would have been unlimited I would have kept the Oretic ASG2 to function here. But I digress. The Network Acoustic Mu and Pro Network filter only has limited effect on the sound quality of the Grim players since they have extremely good dejittering circuits, but since it is beneficiary on other streamers I keep it in the setup 1A for fair comparison. This setup has an extremely high resolution sound, not digital at all or, as I described earlier, it sounds like a studio tape recorder at 38 cm per second, 15 IPS for mids and highs and like a high quality digital recorder for the lows. It's the best of both worlds. It therefore is my absolute reference. I know now that the original release of famous Blue Raincoat can sound clean without sharp S sounds, of which several people supposedly in the know say it's in the recording. Not so. The same goes for Irk by the Nits. Maddox and Englishman by Joe Cocker and Atom Hard Mother by Pink Floyd suddenly sound musical and more open. For now every top end digital player will be judged against this formidable setup. I don't use the Rune server in the Grim. It is Intel i3 based which is sufficient for somewhat around 4000 to 5000 albums while I have 2.5 times that amount. That calls for an i7 based server so I use an i7 based Intel NUC as Rune server. It is the power of Rune that the Grim players can facilitate that too. It might all be a bit much so let's make an overview. Setup 3 uses the Beam Pro Plus streamer with i5 power 2 power supply, the NADC 316BE amplifier and the DALI Oberon 1 loudspeakers. Optionally the RHEL T5 subwoofer can be used. Setup 2C uses the Blue Sound Note 2i streamer with PD Creative Power Supply, the Arcam Radia A25 Amplifier, the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers and the RHEL T5 subwoofer. Setup 2B uses the Eversolo DMP A6 with B Technic LPS A6 Linear Power Supply in combination with the same Arcam Amp, Acoustic Energy loudspeakers and RHEL Sub. In Setup 2A the front end is the combination of the Magna Mano Ultra MK3 Farad streamer with the Holo Audio Cyan 2D DAC. Amp, speakers and sub again are the same. Setup 1B uses the same digital front end as 2A, the Magna Mano Ultra MK3 Farad streamer and the Holo Audio Cyan 2 DAC. The amp is the Air Acoustics AX520 and the speakers are the PMC Fact 12 signature. Finally setup 1A now has the Grim Audio Mu2 player, Rune Server, Scaler and DAC 
which is combined with the air amp and PMC loudspeakers. Since I work on both the ground floor and the third floor, there is a comprehensive network set up. On the third floor in the machine room we find the Netgear ProSafe GS418 TPP switch that using fiber optics is connected to the Optron Ether region switch with the Ultracaps Ultimate 1.2 power supply in the studio and provides the network to setup 2 and 3. It is also connected to the Zixel GS1900-10HP switch downstairs over fiber optic connection. From the Zixel there is a CAT6 to the Zigo Sagamcom internet modem and router that is also situated downstairs. It is further connected to a TP-Link Deco M4 Wi-Fi mesh network with one access point on each floor. In the machine room the Intel NOC 10i7 FNH runs Rune Rock on a 128GB M.2 SSD and has the music stored on an internal Samsung 870 EVO 8TB SSD drive. By the way, the only reason to use an internal SSD for the music storage instead of an external USB drive, as I did previously, is that it makes it easier to move the Rune server around. The NUC is connected directly to the Netgear switch over a CAT6 patch cable. Next to the NUC is the Synology DS1819 Plus NAS with DX517 extender. It mainly functions as a backup and storage for my work but is also used for testing DNA streamers. On the other side of the spectrum I use a 100 Euro single drive NAS, the Synology DS119J. It holds a 3 terabyte drive filled with music, which will be more than the average user will have and thus is more realistic for domestic use. But I can use the big NAS as well. The advantage of using a simple NAS is that it consumes less power than a computer and can do all kinds of things like backups and make files available to, for instance, your smartphone on the road. But the cheap NAS is also slower, of course. The Rune Rock server shares its volume holding the music as Samba share, so that alternatively can be used for self-indexing streamers like those by Sonos, Blue Sound and Aurelic. It often helps to look at somewhat complex matters with graphics. That was the motivation for making and maintaining this series of videos. The complexity at the same time is the versatility, although I do understand it can be hard to imagine what setup variant leads to what sound quality. Talking about quality, although it looks very convenient for you to publish absolute quality ratings, things in audio aren't that simple. If you want to know a bit more about this, you could watch my video Q&A which device is better. Please let me know when things are not clear. But also realize that it's not always a matter of better or worse. There has to be a match with your requirements, wishes and other equipment. Please see the description below this video on YouTube for links to the videos and reviews on equipment mentioned here. Which brings me to the end of this video. As usual there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the description below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. <laughs>